transition, let's hit the road Looking back, I know they probably doubt me Now the city on my back, I wear it proudly I'm a hero in the making If I'm dreaming, you can't wait my time I'm seizing the moment Cause I gotta go for the time's gone Ain't scared of the dark Cause I'm bringing the light with a nice long I shine on Now, this is where the game actually gets kinda hard um, the air characters, every single one of them, are very, like, non, non new player friendly. And I say that because Raster dies very easily, right? Um, if you're new. If, not at all. If you're, if you're really good, not at all. This character, this character always does past 100 if you're really good, even though he's light. But if you're new and you don't understand the concept of DI, or understand how to, how to implement the concepts that Rivals has for DI, you will die at like 60 consistently. And that's when he looks like a light character. So he's really hard to pick up because of that. Absa is also light and floaty, so she dies off the top really easy. And then she's got a lot of wonky stuff that's like not traditional to the rest of the Rivals game because of how her double jump works. And you have Eliana, who is by far the hardest character in the game to use, right? So the air characters, are very hard but if you're all just like getting into the game learning him this is still fine because you can learn any character you want but there are definitely characters who are harder to play than others and this is one of them raster raster is a character who is probably the best the best character in the game and it all revolves around this little wind uh tornado he throws out and we call it slipstream that's the name of the move it's called slipstream he throws a tornado and it creates a current of wind for like six seconds or something and while he's in that current of wind, he gets a speed boost. He even has a different dash tag animation while he's running in it. Just to show you how he's faster. Because now if I run, I'm like slow, like a little bird flapping. But again, if I'm in it, I'm like a, a hawk hunting you down. Kind of thing, right? Uh, while the slipstream is out, his down special goes longer. His dash tag goes longer. Or further, I should say. And again, you're fast. You're very, very fast. You're so fast to the point where some moves uh, that wind connect before... Are now kill confirming because they're connecting now like kind of thing it's very good but the problem with this is that it's hard it's very hard to to, to just start off and just do these things because the problem the, th the 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 theory of raster or like the the whole like design formula of raster is i'm a very light character therefore if i hit you you should die too right because I'm going to die at like 60 it is like the whole like that's what's supposed to happen right so Raster's supposed to die early like at 60 because he's light he, he's gonna die early but to help him he's supposed to be able to kill you at 62 that way it still stays fair but still adding a different dynamic to the game of it being feeling different every character should feel different and do different things but he doesn't die <laughs> um at 60 Dan anyway learn your confirms again I I recommend going to like the the character discords and they'll be help, able to help you much better than I can so I again don't play this character but uh yeah you're gonna have to uh master his combo game or at least have some sense of when this stuff is going to work otherwise you're, you're gonna lose a lot because he's very light and so you don't have a lot of chances to keep messing up here but you're going to die at 60 especially if you're new right so, that is the theory of Raster, but he's, again, very hard. So, what you're going to be doing in neutral for Raster is being, being very patient. There is never a need for you to approach, ever. Like, timeouts don't happen in Rivals. Like, technically, yeah, you should approach because you're losing and the time will run out, but that literally never happens in this game. There, did you know in Rivals, there's like a whole, like, at 10 seconds, the game is like, doop, 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 and it counts down, like, from 10 to 0? I didn't even know that until months into the game because I, it never happens. But that's a cool feature, and I'm like, oh, that's a really cool feature. I'm happy they added that. But you never get to see it. Why? Because the game never goes to time, like ever. It never goes to time, ever. So Raster, you can play patient because it's not going to go to time. It's never going to go to time. It, they, they will approach you. Like people who play Rivals are going to approach you before they ever let that shit happen because that's not how we play the game. <laughs> Just not how we play. We're gonna attack you eventually. So Raster has not a care in the world to actually approach you. And again, if he hits you, you should be killing them, right? Like that's just what your character does. You're supposed to hit them, and when you're in this slipstream, you they can't get away. 
that is how the character works. It's how he functions, right? He's kind of like he's playing Marvel, right? You play like a, a safe neutral in Marvel, and then when somebody fucks up, they die. Like that's just how 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 it works. But normally, it's harder for them to kill you than it is for you to kill them, because again, you just play safe with Raster. Look at how fast you are in this. They're not like if you're dash dancing here, like like this, they they're gonna they're gonna whiff. They're going to whiff, and then they're gonna get get killed. Cause this is a friend. This this is the thing about Raster. The thing about Raster is that he can jump cancel his tilts. So my F tilt, my down tilt, up tilt, all these tilts can be jump canceled. So I can wave dash out of my tilts. So like that, right? And you get an extender. So again, it's just like he's going to. Is going to get like in your face and you're going to die <laughs> like that's the thing about these air characters yes they're all very hard but if they hit you you can be like up here and they will still reach you there there is <laughs> like the amount of times you see an absolute like do forward air and then double jump up air up here in the very high corner or raster just combo the hell out of somebody into this corner and like kill them or eliana fly with them into the corner and smash attack up here like they're the only characters that can combo you like that but they're again they're very hard to play so <laughs> all right now we have absa this character is very hard to play like i've stated already being an air character there's a lot of things she can do though if you master her, she can be extremely fun to play like if you've ever seen a, a guy named kobe he makes her look like the most fun character in the world and you can do like the craziest stuff with her but that kind of goes for every character in Rival. you can do insane stuff with all of them because they're just so unique fun and open-ended that's the thing about them they're all so open-ended it's like it's like if you've ever played uh smash like the newer smashes um the characters are not very open-ended like even in ultimate every character kind of feels like they do like the same thing but it's like they're just different levels of effective at doing that said thing like every, everyone has like a down throw up air or some kind of throw combo it goes like into one hit or maybe two hits if you're special right kind of thing like everyone does like similar things but that's not really in this game as you can see with everyone i've already talked about um and absa is no different but she's very hard to play in that her double jump is a double jump cancel double jump yay it's like lucas mewtwo yoshi and melee um well all those characters in melee uh ness you're going to go down when you uh do your double jump but that's good because now you can do stuff like this right you can double jump cancel your forward airs yeah but the double jump mechanic the double jump mechanic is what makes her very difficult because like i said moving in rivals is actually really fun and really easy but with her it actually takes some time to get used to because you have to wait for you to dip down first so it's kind of weird to be honest yeah it's definitely where she still moves fast as you can see everyone moves fast but it's definitely a different like feel when you're playing her over the other characters it's really different but yeah as you can see she feels really strange and that's actually part of the reason why she feels like a um a different character like a completely different like non-rivals character almost sometimes and she doesn't really have a boxing game she doesn't have a jab too like every other i think every other character in her, besides shovel knight has a jab one jab two combo at least right she only has this this is it's like a multi jab so you just hold it and it does this so it doesn't really give you the sense of i'm gonna run up and do jab jab and then do like a thing because you're just going to do like usually jab one into something which is fine but it just feels you know different and that's basically the thing about apps is that yeah she has a lot of fantastic tools like everybody but it's just gonna feel really strange at first so the thing about apps is that she's a zoner like craig and sylvanos and she's a traditional zoner so she has a really long range projectile but the thing about her projectile is that unlike every other projectile in the game it cannot be beat by any attack in the game and she can send it as far as she wants place it at literally anywhere on the stage like that is in like the blast zone top right corner and i can connect to it with my neutral b if i hold the b button i make a lightning bolt from wherever i am to my cloud so i have like infinite range here if that gets parried i do go on a stun but yeah sometimes it doesn't matter <laughs> So yeah, and that does kill, by the way. That's a very strong move. Anyway, uh, Abs' whole game plan is sending out this cloud, cutting off space, and then you are reacting and punishing whatever they want to do to get around this cloud or how they want to parry the cloud. Because sometimes you leave that cloud here, right? And they want to run into it and they want to parry it because they, they want to like get rid of it and they want to like punish you for hitting them. But if you just waited and then they parry, then you pop the cloud and then they get hit anyway, right? 
and then next time they may try to just jump over it because they're tired of dealing with you know trying to parry it and then that's when you forward air them <laughs> and then <laughs> they get hit anyway right or they try to roll through it and that's when you stand your ground and you forward tilt and that starts a combo right like you have options for everything they want to do to get past this cloud it just becomes a huge mind game this just being here like they, they can run passes if they want but if you read that, you can punish them with your very uh, fast F tilt, which, or you have two part F tilt. So like your F tilt, it's like F tilt one, is like the little zap in front of you. And F tilt two is a long reaching, uh, basically laser attack. Let me just show the hitbox on this actually. It's kind of ridiculous when you look at the hitbox. It's actually crazy. Look at that. That's actually insane how far that goes, right? Yeah. But it only does four damage and it sends them up to the air to disadvantage or you can um read a double jump and get an up air or forward air so it's it's not like true but it puts them in a bad spot to be hit by this so basically your whole game plan is is i have the cloud out in somewhere you don't want to go if you want to stay away from the cloud want to pester you with this f tilt too right and you're gonna be knocked to the air and i can read that and go for a kill or i can just wait patiently and take the stage right it's fine like you just control the stage so well with this character with just two moves basically just the cloud and your f tilt like and because the cloud can go basically anywhere you can put it really high in the air to where they can't even jump past this because if they try to jump or something or just jump in like let's say you're here right and they want to jump at you and hit you just pop the cloud they can't jump they can't parry when they're in the air so if they jump it's like, they're like asking you to, yo, hit me with that cloud, bro. I got you. And you just pop it. That's it. So Absa, she controls neutral very well with just, with just this cloud, this F tilt, right? And it can actually feel, and it's funny because those are such simple options, but they make the opponent think so hard to get around them that it becomes like almost oppressive in, in the thought of how do I get past this, right? Because if I try to get past it, I'm going to get hit. I'm just going to get hit. She's very good and oppressive when uh, when you can't get through her clout. And it's basically at almost every point in the game, it's going to be out. Not to mention that, but her up B gives her crazy movement options. So it actually becomes really hard to understand where she's going to be at some points of the game, right? So that's Absa. Okay, so Eliana is a very weird... I'm picking the bunny. Hold on. I can't play with this. Where's my bunny? So Eliana, or I'm picking Ayala the bunny um extremely hard character to play this is the hardest character to play in the game because they just don't make that much sense from a rival's like perspective like you played any other character before she came out right she plays so much differently than all of them that it actually doesn't really feel natural to play her like her 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 double jump is non-existent she doesn't have a double jump she has a, a, a hover mechanic that allows her to fly across the stage right so if you're in disadvantage, you don't have the option to really double jump away like other characters. Like, look, I'm pressing double jump. This is the highest I get to go. Well, I'm like, I'm, if I'm overheated, right? But if I don't have heat, um, I can fly. But that's still just different because you still don't get like a, a boost of movement. It's not like an immediate like double jump. You have to actually manually fly away. So it feels really weird. And the fact that you have a, you have to actually manage uh, a a resource is something that no other character has to do in Rivals. Like this, this uh, heat bar, as you can see, it's building up as I fly. You have to manage that very well, otherwise you'll overheat and you can't fly. And if you can't fly and get knocked off stage, you have to do this. And then if you get hit out of that, you're dead. Because uh, even at zero, you can die at literally zero if you do this and get hit. Because you don't have a real recovery after that. All you have at that point is an air dodge. But I will say, you do get two air dodges. So you can air dodge in the mech, up B, and air dodge again. So you at least have that. You're working with two air dodges, unlike any other character. Just, just another thing to point out, though. Like, no other character can do two air dodges. So, it's just something else that's strange. And another thing is that you have these projectiles, your specials, which are um, uh, really good, actually. Very powerful specials. And this one, that was crazy. I didn't want to do that. But this, this one, this down B, it had to be nerfed many times because of how ridiculous it is. Because it can be planted on the opponent. Right? And now it's on them. And as long as it's on them, they have to fear this missile because if it's hit, if it, if it hits them, they blow up. And as you can see, they were stuck in place for a little bit of time there, right? And what that means is that uh, they can be hit by something else, so the combo can keep going. So if I do something like this, hold on, this is so much harder than it looks. Oh my god, I didn't even want to do that. 
but that missile came in clutch because I was about to have to redo that clip. Anyway, as you can see, you can be hit while you're stuck like in that explosion. So uh, she's got great specials, as you can see. Great, great, great specials. And her up B is also invincible in frame one, and then it blows up on the end. And it's really kind of hard to parry that because the timing dep uh, varies depending on how much steam is on like the little bar there. And then she has, I'm missing a special, aren't I? Neutral B. This is a great finisher off stage. If you uh, get the read on him, that can push him away and kill him. But uh, <laughs> that was such a bad example, but you get the point. <laughs> she has great specials, but when she's overheated, because you didn't manage the bar well, or maybe you wanted to overheat, right? She has no access to her specials. I'm spamming the B button here. I can't use a special because I'm overheated. I have to cool off my jets before I'm able to actually do that. So how do we do that? You can release your uh, your steam or your overheat by smash attacking. They release steam in you know, any direction you want to smash attack in. And that will cool down your bar. So let's say I've heat up a little bit. As you can see, my bar is pretty huge. But if I do this, it goes down a bit. It goes down. It goes down. I'm empty now, right? So you got to manage your, your, your resource with her. And it's pretty difficult. That's Again, it's something that no other character has to do. But thankfully... Her doing that is actually really uh, intuitive with her rest of her kit. Like, this is going to start combos. I, I, I am no means an Eliana player. No, not at all. But just know a good Eliana player is going to kill you off of that. Like, there we go. Right? There we go. Kind of, that kind of thing. You're going to die if you get hit by these things, right? So it's still intuitive. It's not like too crazy, like insanely hard to do, but definitely a skill level to doing all this stuff together. Yeah, it's very hard. So, Eliana, what you want to be doing, uh, let me just get to that, is you're going to be kind of zoning by jumping around the stage, putting up these huge clouds of like, basically walls of uh, hitboxes to keep yourself safe. Because as you can see, this is a big woman. She and a she and a mech here. And this is this is a huge, huge hurt box. This is a huge. You're a big old square. Look at you, almost a rectangle. See, you you don't want to be hit with this character. You do not. I cannot stress. You do not want to be hit playing this character. Don't let them touch you because if they touch you, you're gonna die. So you're gonna be using a lot of steam to say no. You will not get close to me. I know what you can do if you touch me. Don't touch me. Do not touch me. They have to get through that, by the way. And they have to, or use an attack that moves that stuff. But yeah, it's really effective that she has this. And she has these missiles to keep keep you at bay as well. And yes, her specials do build up her meter. But again, if you're using all this in tandem, it's going to be still like uh, intuitive, like I, keep, like I said before. It's going to work out. She's, uh, this, once you understand how her kit works, it's actually not the hardest to understand how to use it all. But starting the starting point is going to be very difficult, let me tell you. Other than that, all you need to know about Eliana is that your combo game, like Raster, right? It's a little different how it works. The dynamic is different. So Raster, the, the philosophy, that's the word I was looking for. The philosophy is that Raster is light. So he should be able to kill you because you're, he's going to die at 60, right? But even though, again, he just never, he almost never dies at 60. So it's actually a flawed philosophy. But yeah. I die at 60, so I should be able to kill you at 60, which he can actually do, by the way. That's that's actually not uh, wrong in the philosophy. He actually can't kill you at 60, but that's the that's the thing. I'm light, I die, so I'm going to make you light. Eliana's the same way, except her flaw actually exists, which is she's extremely combo food, and she's heavy, so she doesn't get sent as far as the characters. So she gets hit, and her model's bigger, so she's easier to catch even on DI out sometimes. Like some things will obviously barely be, you know, catch Eliana that won't catch other characters because her model's so huge. So basically what I'm saying here is that Eliana is a character that gets touched and actually blows up from any percent basically. She can die because her model's huge, she can't get away from you, right? Her disadvantage is not the best. And as I showed you, if she's overheated when you hit her, if she gets sent off stage, she doesn't have a good recovery. She has to like up B, which is, <laughs> I've skilled some of Eliana's at like 20% or from like a, a Nair Gimp at Silvano's. Like you don't want to be off stage overheated. So you don't want to get hit. And what does that mean? The philosophy for Eliana is the same as Raster. If I die from a single hit, you're going to die from a single hit. And she does that very well. If, if the Eliana can execute, 
if you get hit by even this is why it, it feels unfair sometimes actually playing against Eliana. If any of that hits you, this huge hairbox, right? You can be zero to death off that. This this huge move can can technically start a zero to death because she's zoning you, right? But let's say you made the mistake of like accidentally trying to like running parry and you mess up the running parry on this because you can actually run up and parry this cloud. That's how you get rid of it. Well, that's how you deal with it, right? But if she if you mess that up and, she, and you get hit by this, she can combo you out of that. And as you saw a little earlier, that can literally be your life. And it feels unfair at times. But then you remember, I can do the same to her if I hit her. So it actually, that's the dynamic or philosophy that they want to do a raster. But I think they actually got it down better with Eliana. My experience with Ori, uh, with good Ori's, has shown me that there is nothing this character can't do. Nothing this character cannot do. Um, and your neutral is going to be overwhelming your opponent with your, your speed. Kind of like Maple, except it's different. Maple's speed usually comes from her run. Uh, Ori's speed comes from his air. Like, he's extremely mobile in the air. Like, he's like, he's technically, he's based off Captain Falcon in his moveset. He has the Captain Falcon up air. He has the Captain Falcon near, but it's on his forward air. As you see, like, right here, the two hit uh, kind of aerial. That's like Captain Falcon, and it starts more combos, right? He's like heavily inspired by Captain Falcon, except they gave him a good recovery, so it's terrifying. So it's like they took Captain Falcon, gave him a really good recovery, and gave him a projectile, and gave him a reflector, and said, "This is how we do Cap. This is how we see Captain Falcon in Rivals of Ether. This is what Ori is. Ori is a character that's going to be using a lot of bait and punish with Sign as well. As you can see, like I've said, I've previously stated before, Sign's going to follow you wherever you go." Meaning that uh, you can do a lot of crazy approach options. You can jump at them, they'll parry, you like blow up sign because he's behind you or something. You can just do something like this. Right? Let, let go of sign. So when you're playing Ori, you're either going to be approaching with aerials, like just straight up jump at them and do an aerial, plat drop aerials like this, right? Or you're going to be doing wave dash up and jabs, right? Because if you, you have a frame three jab which is insanely fast probably the fastest jab in the game and the, the downside is that it's very little range blah 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 but uh if you're inside of them when you do a jab uh you can do two jabs and always get a forward tilt no matter how they di literally no matter how they di you get a forward tilt if you're inside of them but the tip of the jab uh you're unable to get uh anything off the second hit so be wary of that just know you're probably better off just doing a single jab and then go straight into a tilt because that's going to be way more consistent than doing two but if, if you realize you're on and inside of them you can do something else let's see uh yeah 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 one two three <laughs> you have a frame oh, I hate this character so much because here's the thing he's supposed to have a bad recovery when he's going low but look at how high he can get Yo, this character broke and get me out of here. We have Shovel Knight himself. Uh, the, neutral, the neutral for Shovel Knight, or like the general game plan, is going to be how am I going to get the money? Go off stage, get the fish of gold, and recover back up to safety. And even if uh, they nerfed this, it used to give you 750, now it only gives you three or uh, 500. Uh, this is still worth your time to do and learn how to do. Because that's still, that's a thousand G's right there, or that's 1K gold right there so it's still worth your time to do that and then once you have uh 1400 or more which is just three fishing trips or two fishing trips and like some fighting get some jewels or gold uh you have enough to get your best neutral option which is the, at least in my opinion the best neutral option still is the ghost gloves and now you can start poking at your opponent uh keeping them at bay right like so many options are just open by having these and you can get way um easier approaches out of this you can actually like do something like this and now you're in right like look at that like it's it's just really nice to have these and uh, you know you can also play around with like the, the mobile gear and whatnot but in general that's basically your neutral with shovel knight uh and it's it's a very fun game plan because you know as you hit them you collect money and you're able to buy other items like this uh male momentum for example which makes you heavier and it makes you uh basically faster because your your wave dash goes further and so does your uh, turnaround, so it's it's pretty pretty fun to play. And uh, honestly, it's just that's basically all it is to Shovel Knight. 
Uh, he's got a lot of cool gimmicks that you can learn in the character discord. That was funny. Uh, but yeah, that's basically what he likes to do. Nothing too different from what I've said before. Or Kane is kind of an open camp canvas uh, for a character. It's kind of strange to say what he really does, but I'll tell you what he's good at, right? He's great at boxing. Fantastic boxing game. His jabs, his down tilts are so quick. And the thing about his jabs is that you get hit by these, you can't tech the first two hits. Almost every other character in the game has a jab too you can tech, which means it becomes more of like a mind game, a tech chase even, right? So like jab, jab, where are you going? Kind of thing, when you hit somebody with your jabs. Or Kane's jab too cannot be teched. And that changes the dynamic into, instead of, um, are they going to tech, it becomes, I'm going to hit you more. Like, because <laughs> Orkane can combo off his down tilt, and he becomes guaranteed off his jab too. So jab, jab, down tilt, oh sorry, jab, jab, down tilt, and there, where are you going from there? So your combo game is very good because your jabs are good. Kind of like Ori, a lot of their combos are going to start with jab one, or jab, jab one, jab two kind of stuff. The reason why having a safe jab is, fan or not a safe jab, but a, a untechable jab is ridiculous is because jabs are safe in this game. Um, in other games, yeah, like, not Smash, for some reason jabs aren't safe in Smash with the shield mechanic, because they can always be up beyond the shield, like, immediately. You would, like, do, like, a character's gentleman, like, like, Captain Falcon, you know, in, in Melee on shield, that's safe, because the shield stun, and it should be, jabs should be safe on shield. But in other games, like, Brawl, Smash 4, Ultimate, whatever, if you jab somebody's shield, 9 times out of 10, they have an option that's gonna, like, up be out of shield, um, up smash out of shield, nair out of shield, like, like fast moves out of shield that can punish you for touching their shield regardless of what it is, even if it was just a jab. And rivals, jabs, if they parry, if they get parried, they don't put you in a stun, unlike everything else. So if you down tilt and you get parried, you're going into stun. Up tilt, F smash, back air, anything, you're going, you're getting stunned. But jabs do not put you in a stun. So you can safely move up, and we call it a jab check. So you can, with, with Orkane, walk up, jab one. If they parried it, run the fuck away. <laughs> if they don't parry it, oh, okay, jab two, down tilt. And you get a big combo, knock him off stage, whatever. What I will say about Orkane is, yeah, he's got a great boxing game. He's uh, got a great combo game. But he also has the best ledge trap game in the game. It's because of these. These bubbles? It's funny. I swear people used to do these bubbles at the ledge when the game first like dropped, like in October 2015, November, because there was a, a player who was a PM player, I can't remember the tournament I entered, but uh, it was Yumacon 2015, and oh, Daddy's Kisses, I think was his name, he was a PM player, and he played Orkane, and he used to do this, where he would knock you off stage, and then he popped bubbles, right, and that would be so good, it would be like crazy, like, wow, this character really doesn't let you do anything at the ledge with because of the bubbles. But for some reason, people just stopped doing that. And Zaro, the best Orkane player, he started doing it again, but he's even more oppressive when he does it because he's just smarter. Or not smarter, but he's just really smart with how he does it. And it's just, it's just amazing because these bubbles negate many recovery options. Many, like most characters who have good recoveries don't have a good recovery against these bubbles. And they're supposed to be like, really bad because you can parry them but if you're in the air recovering you can't parry them so you just take the damage and while you're stuck in these he's gonna up air you right or or he's gonna hold on god damn it oops he's gonna back air you right so and it sends you back off stage to be set up again so he kind of like picks away at like your air dodge your double jumps Things you want to use to try to get away from the bubbles, he's taking that away by simply pressing down B at the ledge. And so you have way less to work with, and he's going to just hit you back out and set it back up. And then your recovery is going to be much worse because now you don't have a double jump or an air dodge. And now the next time you come back, he's going to just hit, kill you. He has some of the strongest smash attacks in the game, or strongest attacks in the game, period. But definitely smash attacks. You have a really good projectile for approaching, kind of like Zetaburn in that you throw a fireball before you approach. You could save for one. Uh, but two, if it hits, you're like, uh, unlike Zetterburn, you're actually in advantage, I want to say. Because I think you actually get, yeah, you actually get true combos if this hits people. Like that, see? You're in advantage, unlike Zetterburn throwing his fireball. So, you have a really good approaching, like this, like, well, I messed up, but yeah, you get it. Really good projectile for approaching, continuing combos, all that. It's really good. Be reversing, 
so good. Edge guarding, even you can like knock him out of doing something, get rid of smoke off stage, uh, you know, you just interrupt people. Very good projectile. So he has good projectile for approaching. He's got fantastic ledge trapping, and his boxing game slash combo game is some of the best in the game, right? That's Orcane in a nutshell. Edelus is a uh, character who is very simple. He just likes to do a lot of dash decks in neutral. Why does he do dash deck in neutral? Because as you just saw, I can wave dash out of my dash deck. Meaning, I'm going to be owning this ground. He's kind of like Sylvanos. Actually, Sylvanos and Ellis kind of share a lot of a lot of things, being heavies that are very fast and have, um, what's it called? Uh, a lot of ground control. That's like their thing. That's what makes them good. And that's what makes them um, uh, very unheavy like is that they're fast and they have control over the ground that's not something you normally see from a heavy right and why did they why does edelus control the ground well because he can put down ice on the ground right and essentially anywhere this ice is is like his reach that's how that's how far he can reach you basically like right here still hit you right so that's what it, that's what i mean when i say he controls the ground so edelus is a character that makes people want to go to the platforms because they don't want to deal with his his shenanigans here but um, he's got a couple options to deal with that, like Nair and Ford Air. Even though his Ford Air may be slow, it's still a pretty good option. The less platforms are, the better he is because he's given this option right here. Ice Sickles. And you may think if you're if you're a semi-veteran or you just know how these work, if you parry this, uh, this, is, this is really bad for Atlas. But the thing about having an open area, like without platforms, is that when he ha does this, it covers the stage for one in ice, which gives him more reach. And two, if you're jumping against Edelus, these become unparryable because you again you can't parry while you're in the air. So jumping against him, if he times these, right? You're gonna get hit. And if you get hit by this, hold on. There we go. You can convert off these ice shards, right? That's the whole point of the ice shards, that you know it covers the ice and of the stage in ice. And he, can, he has a lot of hits done, so he can combo you off of it. So if you're jumping against him, it's going to be really difficult to deal with. So you kind of, if you're playing, if you're playing Edelus, you're going to be doing a lot of. I'm going to tell you that you're going to be doing dash attack most of the time. You're going to be going to be seeing what they do, like how I said with Sylvanos, checking what they're doing. And once they show you what they like to do, you just kind of run them over later in the game because you know everything they want to do. Rano is uh pretty well rounded. He's like Mario in a way, where he has uh, an option for everything. Oh, I'm getting hit. Let me just nair out the uh, back air. Get me out of there. Uh, oh, uh, I want to play a little safer. Let me just throw some darts, you know, throw some damage safely. I got it, right? Oh, you're uh, you're being a little too aggressive. I have a tongue for that. Right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah, you get the point, right? And he has a fant as you just saw, he has a fantastic combo game because bubble exists. If Ronald didn't have up air one, right? And if he didn't have tongue for like the bubble, this combo game wouldn't actually be that good. But because he has those things, it's gonna make it so you can't just DI out and like get away from him. Because obviously this is gonna let you get away from him, right? You have to admit, do like an air dodge or something to get away from them, right? And then at that point, he could probably continue on if he re that air dodge, like a forward air, sweet spot, right? And you keep going, right? Or the but if, if you get hit by tongue, it's just a matter if they can keep on you, right? And they usually can. So his combo game is really good. His keep out game is fantastic because he has darts, right? The problem with Rano is that he doesn't really have much range out outside of his darts, right? He doesn't have range, and he has no disjoint besides. Uh, he doesn't really have disjoint to be honest. He's not really a character made to disjoint a lot. Actually, he's up B. It's really strange to say this, but if you look at his up B hitbox, it's actually disgusting how big this is. If you look at this, it is like a huge circle around what is a tiny and skinny hurt box. And you will most times hit them uh, with that hitbox before you even, like, before they, their move would hit your hand, right? So it's very disjointed for what it does. And same with his down air, or down air, his down B, or his up B downward, it's so hard to say. Yeah, it goes pretty far underneath some stuff. And yeah, it's, it's disjointed too. These two moves are actually kind of hard to beat uh, on the way down or way up. So, other than that, he doesn't have disjoint. That's like your weakness. And so is your recovery. He doesn't have a good recovery either. Like his recovery, it can be good if you're like using the like a lot a lot of mix-ups and whatever. But um, if that mix-up doesn't like work, you're probably in a really really bad uh, scenario. So he doesn't have a good recovery, which is good. 
and he doesn't have a lot of dishing, which is good. And I, I say that's good because, again, I think it's really nice when characters have flaws and weaknesses. Also, he has the, uh, one of the biggest weakness, weaknesses of um, being uh, really low air mobility. Like, he has very little air mobility. Like, very little. Like, he does, he goes nowhere. Like, look at this. He doesn't move, like, at all, at all, like, when he's in the air. So if you're juggling him, he has a hard time landing, right? And I, and I think, again, that's good. But other than those three things, he's basically a perfect character. He has nothing else wrong with him. So if you can, like, get around those three things, you don't care. Because your combo game is disgusting, your keep out game is disgusting, your approach game is disgusting, your kill setup game is disgusting, your kill moves are very good. Um, <laughs> like, you can honestly, truly go on and on about the positives of Rano. But it's fine. Because if, if they abuse those weaknesses, uh, they can easily even up the game. So, if you're playing Rano, what you should be doing is doing a lot of darts because they, they're going to set the pace for something you can do. It's like, uh, is, Rano is a really good new player or yeah, character for new players because he can, he can slow the game down. Because the thing about Rival is that it's a really fast game. If you're playing people who are uh, well versed in the game and know what they're doing, can combo you, like DI all this, all this stuff, like you're not ready like for, to do yet yourself, Ronald's really good because you have darts. And darts say, stop moving, right? Because if they parry these darts, nothing really happens. Like, yes, they get invincibility, and yes, they can chase you down it while invincible for a little bit, but you can just run away during that, right? This, 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 like, slow them down. And again, you have this tongue, which like, kind of stops aggression. So if they overcommit and they run out of invincibility, they might run into this tongue and you and you get them in a bubble. You might be able to get like a couple hits, right? And if you're a new player, this is a godsend for you because it gives you a chance to deal with like some people who are like really good. Just use a lot of darts. Just use a lot of darts and just try to like kind of like a uh, jump with them because you can be more mobile while charging these, right? And it's kind of like, all right, stay away from me kind of thing. Stay away from me. Or you can be aggressive with these, right? I want to approach you with these because if I if I hit, I can get a combo off of this, and that is safe. Because if they pay, again, if they pair this, it, you you might get hit with a dart, but it's not going to be nearly as effective as you hitting them with those darts, right? The risk reward is definitely in your favor when Ronald's throwing darts in the air for the Ronald player, of course. All right, guys, that has been how to play at a basic level, at least every character in Rivals of Ether. I didn't realize that would be a two-hour recording, but here we are, two hours later. Hope you guys enjoyed, and it's been Rottweiler. Have a good one. Flame to your neck, that's a choke slam. Zetter, call a four to assassinate your whole fam. Absa in the 